स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Hello. Today we are going to talk about learn about permutations. So, I'll use this notation. Box n denotes the first n natural numbers. Okay, and a permutation of n symbols is just a bijective function from n to n. bijective function sigma from n to n so what does bijective function mean well it means that uh, it's a function that is both injective and surjective so uh, i'll i'll give you an example let's take n equals 3 so now i'm looking at the set 1 2 3 and i'll write it down once again this set and i'm going to write down an example of a permutation for you so here i'm going to take a permutation so it's a function from 1 to 3 to 1 to 3 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you where each element of this set 1 2 3 goes so in my permutation that i'm going to construct here 1 goes to 2 so this is a function which takes 1 to 2 it takes 2 to 3 and it takes 3 to 1 so i can write sigma as so i'll call this sigma So what we're saying here is that sigma of one is two, sigma of two is three, and sigma of three is one. So note that this is a bijection in the sense that uh, all the three elements one, two, and three occur here in the right-hand side, and uh, of course, since the number of things on the up here and the number of things on this side are the same, each element occurs exactly once. so basically a permutation is a rearrangement of the numbers uh, 1 to m so we'll use the notation sn to denote the set of all permutations on n letters i'll say n letters so these are n numbers so precisely this is sigma functions from box n to box n such that sigma is a bijection okay so let's see if we can list all the elements of s3 so i'll use a what is called one line notation to uh, describe a permutation so if i have a permutation uh, sigma then its one line notation is simply writing down sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma n in sequence so if you look at the permutation we had earlier its one line notation is just sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 so i'll write 2 3 1 so this is just an efficient way of writing down permutation so s3 i'm going to try to list all the permutations so in one line notation so the simplest permutation is where uh, is the identity function so 1 goes to 1 2 goes to 2 and 3 goes to 3 so in one line notation that becomes 1 2 3 so what you're seeing in this one line notation is that basically you're taking the elements 1 to n and you're somehow rearranging them and writing them again so it's a reordering so basically what we are going to do is we are going to write down reordering so of uh, the numbers 1 2 3 So what else can I do? I can take one to one. I can take two to three and three to two. Uh, okay. So this exhausts the possibilities where I'm taking one to one. If I'm taking one to two, then what can I do? I can take two to one and three to three, or I can take uh, two to three and then three to one, or I can take uh, one to three, in which case I can take. Uh, 2 to 1 and 3 to 2 or 3 to 1 so these are the six permutations on n letters you can ask okay so how many permutations are there 
in S n. So, what is the size of the set S n and this is uh, not very difficult to figure out. So, what so I have to figure out uh, to write down a permutation how many choices do I have and so firstly uh, how many choices do I have for sigma 1. So, for sigma 1 well it can go to any of the numbers 1 to n. So, sigma 1 has n choices ok. Now, having made that choice for sigma 1 how many choices do I have for sigma 2 well I have already used up n. So, I cannot use it again. Uh, sorry, I have already used up the number sigma 1. So, I cannot use it as a value for sigma 2. So, except for that I can use anything else. So, I have n minus 1 choices for sigma 2. Now, having chosen sigma 1 and sigma 2, what remains are n minus 2 choices for sigma 3 and so it goes all the way. In the end having chosen uh, sigma 1, sigma 2 dot 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 up to sigma n minus 1, there will be only one element from the set 1 to n which has not been used and that is going to be sigma n. So, that is 1 and this so this is just n factorial. So, you see here S 3 has cardinality 6 which is just 3 factorial and uh, if you take a deck of cards then uh, the every every rearrangement of this deck of cards is when I shuffle these cards every rearrangement is is a permutation right. So, I start with a perfectly sorted deck of cards and then I shuffle it and then I have a mixed up deck and the question is how many possible such decks can I get and so what is the answer well uh, if you do not have the jokers then it is uh, 52 factorial right it is pretty large. So, that is uh, just what permutations are, but uh, the theory of permutations becomes much more interesting uh, once we take into account certain operations that we can do with permutations. The operation I am talking about is called composition. You see a permutation is just a function right, it is a function from the set n to n. So, if I have a function from the set n to n let us call it sigma 1 and I have another function from n to n. So, that is another permutation I call it sigma 2 then I can compose these functions. This is a new uh, bijection from n to n because the composition of bijections is still a bijection and so what I get is a way of creating a new permutation given two permutations. Let me illustrate this with an example. So, let us take uh, sigma 1 to be our favorite permutation um, takes 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and 3 to 1. So, that is this is sigma 1 and let me cook up a new permutation which I will call sigma 2. So, this one just takes 1 to 2, 2 to 1 and 3 to 3 itself. And now, how do I compute uh, sigma 2 composed with sigma 1? So, so, I have to figure out where each of the numbers 1, 2 and 3 goes. So, let us see. So, so, sigma 2 circle sigma 1 of 1 is sigma 2 of sigma 1 of 1. What is sigma 1 of 1? Well, sigma 1 of 1 is just 2. And what is sigma 2 of um, 2? Well, sigma 2 of 2 is 1. Similarly, sigma 2 sigma 1 of 2 is well. So, sigma 2 of 2 goes to 3 under sigma 1. So, it is sigma 2 of 3 which is still just 3 and sigma 2 circle sigma 1 of 3. So, 3 goes to uh, 1 and 1 goes to 2. So, you see this is 1, 3, 2. Uh, another way of thinking about this is just under sigma 1, 1 goes to 2 and um, let us see. So, 1 goes to 2 and then 2 goes to 1. So, I can just follow through this arrow and that is telling me that under sigma 2 circle sigma 1, 1 goes to 1. And uh, 
where does 2 go again? I'll start with 2 and then I'll follow through the arrow. So 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 1. So 2 goes to 3 and then this 3 I'll follow through this arrow here. 3 goes to 1 and then 1 goes to 2. So, so you can compose permutations by simply following through the arrows. Let us try another example. This time we will take uh, 3 permutations. So, let us just um, add here another permutation. Okay, Let us add a third permutation to this mix. So, I am going to add uh, sigma 3 and I will cook up another permutation here. And this is the permutation which takes uh, 1 to 1, 2 to 3 and 3 to 2. So now I want to know, uh, so I can, I can do this composition. Um, so I want to compute basically sigma 3 circle sigma 2 circle sigma 1. So this you can think about this in two ways. When you think about composition of functions, you can either think of it as composing uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2. So that is what we just computed and then we compose it with sigma 3. So I will write down sigma 3 here. And now we need to follow through the arrows between these two. And so if I try to write down the answer over here. So now let us follow through the uh, arrows. So here I go from 1 to 1, 2 to 3 to 2 and 3 to 2 to 3. So surprise 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2 and 3 goes to 3. Okay, or I could have done this in another order, I could have done it um, sigma 3 circle sigma 2 circle sigma 1. So, if I did it this way then first I would compute sigma 3 circle sigma 2 which means I would follow through the arrows in the two lower diagrams here. Uh, but let me not do that. Uh, the main point to note is that when I did this calculation of sigma 3 circle then sigma 2 circle sigma 1 then what I was doing was really just following through the arrows through these 3 permutations from top all the way down to the bottom. So, so if I start here I can take 1 and I will follow it down 1 goes down to 2, 2 goes down to 1 and then that goes down to 1. So, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 3 and then 3 goes to 2, so 2 goes to 2 and then 3 goes to 1 and then 1 goes to 2 and then 2 goes to 3. So, 3 goes to 3. So, these things are really just the same. There is no difference between whether I compose uh, sigma 3 with the composition of sigma 2 or sigma 1 or whether I compose the composition of sigma 3 and sigma 2 with sigma 1. So, this is this is called associativity. So, And uh, during this calculation, uh, we, we discovered a rather uh, special permutation which basically takes each element to itself. So, it takes 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3. So, this permutation I will call it the identity. So, I will call it ID. Okay, and this has the special property that when you compose it with anything, it does not change that thing. So, if I have so if I have any permutation and I compose it with this identity, for example, my favorite permutation sigma 1. Now, if I compose it with the identity, the second time when I am following through the arrows, it is as if nothing happened, right. So, um, so, sigma 1 identity composed with sigma 1 is sigma 1. 
and also if I do it in the other way right first I do the identity and then I compose it with some permutation So these are the properties of the identity that when you compose it either on the left or on the right with any permutation you get back that permutation. Composition with the identity has no effect on a permutation. The third property that I want to illustrate about permutations is that it is possible to undo anything that you have done. So if I have a permutation taking 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and 3 to 1, then I can find a permutation uh, which undoes whatever I did. So if I have taken 1 to 2, I want to undo it, I want to take 2 back to 1, right. So let us see how to do that. So 2 must go back to 1 and uh, 2 goes to 3, I want to take 3 back to 2 and 3 goes to 1, I want to take 1 back to 3. So in some this is what we call the inverse function right in set theory. So if this were sigma then this would be sigma inverse and what can we say about the composition of sigma with sigma inverse? Well sigma inverse circle sigma is well you follow through the arrows it is the identity and in the same way sigma circle sigma inverse is also the identity. So what to summarize what we have seen about permutations is that this set Sn of permutations of n comes with a binary operation. A binary operation is just an operation which takes two inputs and gives you one output. So here the two inputs are um, sigma 2 and sigma 1, two functions and it goes to sigma 2 composed with sigma 1. And this binary operation satisfies uh, the following axioms. Uh, the first axiom I will write uh, as associativity which says that for any three permutations sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 we have this sigma 3 circle sigma 2 circle sigma 1 is sigma 3. circle sigma 2 circle sigma 1. Then we have the existence of an identity. So there exists identity and uh, I mean we know in this case what it is and so um, there exists which satisfy the property that uh, sigma circle identity equals identity circle sigma for all sigma in Sn. Well, I should have said here for all sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 in Sn. And the last property is the inverse property. That is for every sigma in Sn, there exists an element sigma inverse in Sn such that sigma circle sigma inverse equals sigma inverse circle sigma and both of them are equal to the identity. So these, uh, these properties of permutations taken together abstractly give the definition of an abstract group which we will talk about next time. Thank you.